It is good to worship together. We give thanks for the ways in which God connects us near and far. God created us to be generous people. And we give thanks, too, for the ways you share your abundance with those around you. As you go about your week, consider the opportunities you encounter to give to others just as God has given to you. We join in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Shelter comfort past the 
Let us pray. O God, mighty and immortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Hebrews. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, So terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Luke. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. What are the rules that guide your life? These may change throughout our lives as circumstances and perspectives are changed, but I think we all have some general rules that guide us and our families throughout our lives that help us make decisions. I have a friend who commits to only working two evenings a week. It's a rule no matter how difficult that makes scheduling for himself and for others two evenings a week only. Another rule some people have is don't go to bed angry. Not with a partner, not with kids, not with families, not with friends. Never go to bed angry. Others have a guiding rule to tithe, give 10% of their income to worshiping communities or helping other nonprofits, and that helps them prioritize their spending. Our congregation, the Synod, the whole ELCA has official rules like the Constitution and bylaws. Even the creator of the universe, the one we call God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, they have rules and have given creation, humans, you and I, rules to follow. And we find the people gathered in our gospel today following one of the rules. 
They are in the synagogue on the Sabbath, and Jesus is teaching. All is going well. The rules are being followed until someone catches Jesus' attention. There's a woman crippled and bent over, not because her back was broken, but because her spirit was broken. She wasn't able to stand up straight. We don't know why. We can presume shame or grief. We don't know. But for 18 years, she's been bent over, likely not giving or receiving eye contact. But then Jesus notices her. He stops teaching, and as Jesus so frequently does, he invites this person to come and see him, and he breaks the chains and takes the weight off her back that has her bent, and she stands up for the first time in 18 years and praises God. And at this point, sitting in the synagogue, we would expect the people to respond like the other crowds have, clamoring to get near Jesus, to be made well, to be in the presence of this one they know is different teaching and healing. But that's not the case right away. Instead, the leader is furious because Jesus frees this woman on the Sabbath and he's citing the law, the law that says keep the Sabbath holy and do no work. And Jesus comes right back like he did last week, calling the people hypocrites. This reminds me when someone quotes Bible passages passages at me, trying to convince and explain to me how women shouldn't preach or there should be no same-sex marriage. The leader of the synagogue is quoting chapter and verse essentially to Jesus about not working on the Sabbath, and Jesus pushes back. See, the thing we all forget is that sometimes we forget this. God is not the words of a sentence, but the breath of a paragraph. God is not the individual sentences, but the meaning of the book. The law about keeping the Sabbath holy and not working on the Sabbath has two different origins. The first is in creation, that all creation should have time for rest and renewal. The second comes from Exodus, when it was given as law. But this was such good news to the people it was given to, who were never able to rest. So this was a command and a promise given to all people, rich and poor, young and old, human, animal, all creation. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Honor a time of rest. Both times the law of rest was given to enhance new life. So this leader in the synagogue was simply trying to follow this rule. He's not upset about Jesus seeing the woman. He's not upset about Jesus freeing her from the things that held her bent over and captive. But he said, isn't there another day you can do this? Keep the Sabbath, rest, don't work. And this back and forth about what counted as work was common, but Jesus was proving a point here when he said, do you give your animals water on the Sabbath? There's not a better time than now to give this woman new life and freedom. We don't wait until an acceptable time to free people and send them out with a renewed spirit filled with life and joy. Laws and rules are important. Jesus wasn't denying the law about the Sabbath, but in the face of the law, he chose life because the law was instilled to bring about life, to renew and refresh life. It's why it was created. That's what God is about and has always been able to do through his laws. There are times when people in the church, in the secular world, and everywhere in between, when we get caught up in the black and white, living within the laws of our lives, when we are both the one judging and the one bent over, either enforcing the law or fearing the law. There is no law, however, that is more important than love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. For when we do this, we know how to dance with the law of God. If you are bent over, feeling like you have a broken spirit, know today, God sees you and God knows you. The pain you carry, the weight that holds you down, and the chains that bind you, God is working to free you. God doesn't want you bent over with a broken spirit and says to you today, you are free. You can stand. You are loved. We are people who know both sides of the story. The side of being bent over and the side of love and grace and forgiveness. The side that gives new life and sets us free to stand and praise God. May the rule that guides our lives is to see those who are hurting, draw close to them, and help them to know the one who loves them and frees them for new life, because now is always the acceptable time to be reminded and to remind that you are loved and set free for new life. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the whole people of God. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You satisfy the needs of all creatures. Protect the habitats of fish and birds. Repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster that all creation may thrive. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequality. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Generations bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace. Know that you are loved. Amen.